In this project, you'll learn something about your drawing tools. Effectively, you'll be playing around making value scales and textures. Here, I'm preparing the paper that you have as a PDF file. You could print this out rather than having to draw grids and squares yourself. I have drafting tools to help. And I also have a light box that I'm going to use to trace over a page. This is plain white bond paper or printer paper. This is fine for this project. I'm just going to freehand these squares and I'll use a marker just so it's easier to see. The point isn't to be perfect with making a grid or making boxes. The point is to play around with values and textures. You could just print off the PDF pages, but the way I'm doing this, you could get the grid onto your drawing pad paper easily. Here I'm using a window instead of my little light box. This works just as well. Now I'm set up for doing the project. I'll begin with making a value scale with one end white and one end as dark as I can make it, and the one in the middle is the mid-tone. And so I recommend you begin there. Here I'm just going to use a number two pencil and make a gray, and then make the other end as dark as I can practically make it with this drawing tool. And to start out, I'm not so much worried about what texture I'm leaving behind. I'm just trying to make a range of value with this tool. So once I have mid-tone and dark, I'll go back and make the first square as light as I can make it, and then progressively press down a little bit with the pencil and just try and make each box a little bit darker. As I'm working, Take note of how I'm holding onto the pencil and what angle I have it on the paper. When I want to draw very lightly, I hold the pencil at a low angle. And in order to make the squares change in value, I'm just going to change what direction these scribble marks are. The idea really is to make each box visually distinct from the one on either side. And you can use different tools to do this. Here's one that I started with a pen. Um, this is actually a fountain pen. So I'm going to just crisscross lines and draw the lines closer together in order to make each square a little bit darker. I would like you to try and make a value scale with all your different tools. You're probably wondering, why are we doing this? I guess the answer might be that drawings are effectively patches of value next to each other that describe something visually. And this is a good way to figure out something about how to make different values with different tools, with you in control. I probably should have just painted this last square in black somehow with a paintbrush or something, but I wanted to see what I could do with just making lines on top of each other. Next, I'm going to just draw parallel lines the same distance apart in every square, and with each square, change the direction one more time. So this is just parallel lines. I'll switch tools and go to Vine Charcoal next, and I'll do it the same way. I'll start with a mid-tone and then try and make something as dark as I can, and then figure out how this material works different than pencil and pen. I grabbed the Vine Charcoal down towards the end because I'm pressing down as hard as I can, obviously. I can tell this is going to smudge, so I'm going to go straight back to the beginning and 
start with that method. This will work a little differently on each kind of paper that you have, so you might want to experiment. Try it on bond paper and then try it on sketch paper and see what you like best. My finger isn't a very precise drawing tool, but on a larger scale drawing, this might be the perfect way to make the value that you need. I've done all of this by adding value, but you can also draw by removing value. So here I'm experimenting with an eraser to see how it takes the vine charcoal back off the paper, as well as how it will smudge it differently than my finger. I'll also try this with a charcoal pencil. Next I'll switch to making textures on the two inch squares. And I'm setting up some rules for myself. I'm going to begin by just making textures with parallel lines. There's really no right or wrong way of doing this part of your project. I just want you to experiment with the drawing tools. Notice that I've switched to holding the pencil the same way I would as if I were writing. You can probably see that I'm playing a little game with parallel lines here. It's part of just experimenting and try and have fun along the way. It's very important that you learn how to use line weight in your drawings. And this is just basically how hard you're pressing down. So the next few squares are going to be all about varying how hard I press down on the pencil. Here I'm making a kind of texture that actually reminds me of, well it's going the wrong way, but it's almost like waves on a beach. You'll also notice that I make marks by pushing the pencil, pulling the pencil, dragging the pencil, or whatever tool I have. You should also experiment with making lines going in different directions and still having them go where you want them and be under control. I'm mostly making linear textures because that's what a pencil is good at. But here I'm making lines and dots. And I think you could pretty much draw anything if you just used lines and dots. I'm using a two millimeter lead holder. This is about the same size as the lead is in a number two pencil. But in this case, I'm using very soft lead. It just makes it easier for you to see what I'm doing on camera. I'm actually trying really hard just to make every line interesting. Make every line dynamic. Make every line different from the last one, even though they're more or less going in the same direction and more or less do the same thing. These are just examples. This is what I did. You should invent your own textures and invent your own ways of drawing and try and find out what's comfortable for you. This is charcoal pencil smudging. The charcoal pencil is actually very hard, and the one that I used anyway, and it doesn't exactly smudge. 
This is vine charcoal in it smudges really easily. Compressed charcoal gets all over the place and you might even want to put another piece of paper underneath your drawing paper to catch the mess. It makes a very strong black that can be smudged. Here what I'm doing is just smudging one side of the line. You won't be able to erase compressed charcoal off the paper. And the tool's a little bit clunky to draw with, so most of the time people use compressed charcoal for gesture drawings on large sheets of paper. It's important for you to realize that the eraser is also a drawing tool. I draw with a pen quite a lot, and this is just a ballpoint pen. You should probably draw with the tools that you're familiar with using every day. Hopefully these are enough examples to get you started on the project. You do have permission to do this in your own way. Make sure you experiment and have fun while you're at it.